The Scientific Method for Biology 1406, P11, by Jenny Lockwood and Blake Davidson. The scientific method can be about normal people doing everyday things. That includes you, me, and other scientists of the world. The scientific method is just means or steps taken to produce reliable or repeatable results to answer a specific question. You may think that the scientific method is exclusive to the classroom. I can guarantee you that you use it in your everyday life whether you think about it or not. For example, imagine you get up one morning and you couldn't find your keys. That's an observation. Then you do a little research in your head by thinking about the last place that you remember having them. You suspect that you might have left them in your pants pocket from yesterday. That's a hypothesis. Then you go check to see if they're in the pants. That's your experiment. Things don't always go as planned, but that's okay because the scientific method is always repeatable. It can be restarted at any point in the process. You don't find your keys in your pants. That's your second observation. This leads you to think about where they could possibly be. You remember that you think you left them in your backpack, so you go and check. To your surprise, there they are. Your life can continue, and then you can share your results with your professor and explain why you're running a few minutes late to class. These are steps in the scientific method, and at any step, you can go back and repeat the process. Typically, after you conduct an experiment, you may conduct that your results aren't answering the questions, so you go back and try something else. Observations and research are an ongoing process you're continually going to collect data. Now let's break it down with all the components of the scientific method. Observation, question, hypothesis, experiment, results, and conclusion. Observations include everything that can be observed with your five senses. You can use your sense of smell, sight, taste, touch, and hearing to make your observations in science. Question is an important step in the scientific method because it may answer other questions you might have and help with your experiment before you're going down a path to nowhere or conduct an experiment that's already been done. Make sure you use reliable sources to learn background information. Failing to do so can result in a misinterpretation of your data. Scientific journals and verified online sources tend to use best. Avoid blogs, out-of-date textbooks, or any form of media that can be changed easily, for example, Wikipedia. Once you have completed your research, you may then form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction of what you think will occur. It is often seen as an if-then statement and is very specific. Here's an example. If a gummy bear is placed in water for 24 hours, then they will swell to their original size. It has an if and a then and uses specific terms to allow others to repeat the same steps, thus getting the same results. It also has to be testable and falsifiable. A null hypothesis is what you expect to happen before you run an experiment. The idea is, if the results don't reject the null hypothesis, then you aren't finding anything new or surprising. The experiment itself has several parts. In most experiments, the aim is to collect two types of data, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data relies on the descriptions such as rough, black, bright, or wet, while quantitative data relies on numbers such as 3 meters or 12 gallons. Once you figure out the aim of the experiment and which types of data to collect, you may then define the variables in your experiment. There are two types of variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is the thing that you're changing. The dependent variable is what you're measuring. So going back to the gummy bear example, the change in the experiment is that the gummy bears are being soaked in water. The dependent variable is what you're measuring. 
or the volume of the gummy bear after being soaked. A valid experiment will both have an experimental group where the independent variable is altered and the other group is the control group. The control group is used as a comparison group so you have standards to compare against your changes. The gummy bears placed in the water are the experimental group and the dry gummy bears would be the control as they are unchanged. So to summarize, experiments should have an experimental and a control. The experimental group will have an independent and a dependent variable. The data that is measured and collected can be qualitative or quantitative or both. There are two different types of experiments under this category. There is a scientific, which is categorized as judgments or decisions that are based on direct observations or experimentation. The scientific is more of a measurements to get the truth. The non-scientific experiments are judgments and decision based on what feels right. These are usually non-scientific and more invalid and in inaccurate. Results can be composed into a chart, a graph, or anything else to use to compare and show what was found. In the conclusion, you will be presenting the results in the experiment, what happened, why it happened, and if you accept or reject your hypothesis. Thank <laughs> you.